watching the Mayor's Council on Disability Issues Employment Matters series. Today we're going to do something a little bit different, hence the sombrero on the desk here. Um, Stephanie and I are going to, I'm going to draw questions out of a hat and Stephanie is going to answer those. And um, these questions are questions that employers want to ask but are afraid to do so about hiring and working with individuals with disabilities. So should be pretty fun. Um, hopefully we'll be as entertaining as a sombrero. So um, you ready, Steph? I think so. Okay. All right, so the first question is, does providing an accommodation mean that the performance standards must also be lowered? Oh, absolutely not. Um, an individual with a disability must first be qualified to do the job. And so if they're qualified to do the job, then they should be able to meet those minimum qualifications and the, and the expectations that you would expect of any employee. So when you uh, provide an accommodation or not, the standards apply equally whether or not the employee has a disability. Very good, very good. This is kind of fun. Okay, so the next question. What should, a, what should an employer do if other employees get mad because the individual with a disability is receiving special treatment? I see. Mm, that's a very good question. Um, and I can understand where co-workers may feel that an individual is getting treated special um, and that it's related to the disability but what I um, encourage people to remember is the fact that we are all individuals and every individual in the workforce is subject to being accommodated or dealt with per state local and federal employment laws so we don't know why an individual is being treated a certain way and we should never ever assume it's because of a disability or an accommodation. It could have something to do with the Family Medical Leave Act. It could have something to do with the Fair Labor Standards. You know, we don't know that. So um, we should not assume and we never ever discuss other employees. That's a bad thing. Very good. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, next question. How does an employer create an atmosphere of inclusion? Well, I think an atmosphere of inclusion obviously starts at the top. Um, if your leadership believes in the value of all individuals, then it should hopefully trickle down throughout the entire corporation. But one great way of, I feel, fostering inclusion is mentoring individuals. Allow, allowing individuals to come in maybe on an internship or a volunteer basis um, and showing some of their talents and abilities and skills um, to the other co-workers that may not be used to working with somebody that doesn't look like them or speak like them or get around the way they do and that's one great way to build inclusion is just leading by example um, and showing that all people are welcome in your work environment. Awesome, very good. Okay, next question. Wish these were like prizes. But. Okay, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, is an employer required to provide everything someone asks for if they indicate that it's an accommodation? No, an employer is not required. Let's say an employee with a disability asks for a three-prong accommodation. What you need to first do as a supervisor is work with that individual, speaking with them directly. It's called the interactive process where you learn the exact need of that individual on the work site. And as the employer, you can talk with the employee and discuss what it is that they need and find that accommodation that will get them the most effective ability to do their job and uh, keeps them, you know, a productive employee. If one of the items on that three-pronged list of requests is all that it's going to take to get that job done and allow that person to do their job with ease, then that's all you have to provide. But the bottom line is, it's not about someone with a disability asking for the moon and receiving it as an accommodation. It's about making sure the accommodation fits the person and the job at hand and allows them to get that job done. So they may ask for pie in the sky. We don't necessarily have to provide pie in the sky, but we're gonna provide whatever's most effective for the employee and the employer at the job site at hand to get the job done. Very good. All right. So does an employer have to accommodate a service animal? Well. That's an interesting question. If an employer has to accommodate a service animal, by 
accommodate, um, it sounds to me like um, it may be a situation where the employer wants the employee but is hesitant about having an animal on the premises and maybe is using that as a, a no a no go. But it's not a deal breaker because the service animal is no different than my wheelchair um, as far as it's something that is necessary for the individual. It helps to mitigate a disability. So the service animal being accommodated per se um, shouldn't be a problem as long as that individual is able to maintain control over his or her service animal and they are allowed to take that dog out for necessary potty breaks, that kind of thing. That's really the only accommodation um, that should be necessary. And if it comes to coworkers or, or somebody saying, well, I'm allergic to dogs or I'm, a, I'm afraid of dogs, that kind of thing, then you will have to work with those coworkers or your employees um, on a case-by-case -case basis to just try to um, help them understand that this service animal is not like a regular dog or a pet that would come into the work site. This is some uh, a service animal that's needed for that employee. So it's totally different ball game. So accommodating a service animal, not a problem. Just allow that animal's handler to be able to take it out for the necessary potty breaks, what you would have to do for the dog. Other than that, you probably never know the service animals on the premises. Very good. Thank you so much. I know that that is a common question yes. I think employers have. It is. So what about, can accommodations change over time? Oh sure, accommodations can change. Um, nothing really set in stone about an accommodation. I may have an employee who comes in and um, maybe they have an injury or an illness and they come back to work and we provide them with an accommodation that works for them at that time. But say their health or their physical condition deteriorates. And so we need to reevaluate um, what he or she may need to remain on the job, um, being able to effectively do that job uh, with the next most appropriate accommodation. So sometimes what's appropriate in year one of an employee's employment may not be the most effective accommodation for them in year five. So absolutely leave that door open for if uh, needs should change. Um, and as an employee, be aware that you don't just get one shot at asking for an accommodation either. Good, good. I think that's so important. I mean, you know, life changes for all of us. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. So can an employer fire someone with a disability? Absolutely. An employer can fire an individual with a disability no different than an employer can fire an individual that doesn't have a disability. The key is, um, first of all, we know the employee with a disability is qualified because that's why we hired them to do the job. And if they're qualified and they're doing the job as expected, um, as anybody else would be expected to do, then perfect. But of course, sometimes performance slips. That can happen to any employee. And our jobs as supervisors are to make sure we are letting that employee know that, you know, something's going on, need to work on it, improve it. And if things don't improve, you've, I know, documented it well, as you should, as with any employee and F after so many attempts to remedy the problem it doesn't fix, then sure, you can fire a person with a disability. No different than anyone else. Okay. All right. What should I do if there's a performance issue with an individual with a disability? You may have just answered that question <laughs> um, in that other one. So. Yeah, uh, bottom mm -hmm. line, just like you would answer any performance problem with any disability or person on your workforce, just work with them and try to fix it. Very good. So who should an employer call if they're not sure what to do or need training? Ah, very good question. There are a lot of resources available for employers to learn about um, how to employ and accommodate individuals with disabilities and if you hit a snag or you don't know what to do. Um, certainly a local resource is the Knoxville Area Employment Consortium for training opportunities on the ADA and employing people with disabilities but um, on a national level you have a phenomenal resource in something called the Job Accommodation Network um, or JAN as we refer to it in that. I mean the website alone is just a true mm -hmm. wealth of information information and it gives it to you um, really in layman's terms, you know, where you can understand what does it mean to me as an employer or as an employee um, and that kind of thing. But definitely if you need training as a company on the ADA, get into touch with us at KAEC and we can certainly make sure that that happens. 
Okay. And I think that website for the Job Accommodation Network is um, askjan.org. Yes. yes. Um, and it is fabulous. Yes, just it like is. Stephanie said. Yes. So. Okay. Um, are individuals with disabilities required to disclose that they have a disability before accepting the position? No. If you are an individual with a disability, you don't have to disclose your disability at any one specific point in time. Um, if you have an obvious disability, like myself, then it's maybe moot, um, but you never have to disclose a disability. Okay. Is it true that individuals with disabilities have higher incidence of workplace injuries? Oh goodness, no, it is not true <laughs> that individuals with disabilities um, have a higher instance of workplace injury. No, um, the statistics out there really show that there is no difference on the job between people with disabilities and people without disabilities. Um, if there is a difference worth noting, however, I have to say that people with disabilities um, on the long term are seen to be as more loyal. They stay with the company. They bring a value to the company as far as inclusion and diversity goes that's, that you can't get by not hiring individuals with disabilities. So there's a strong case um, in the business world for hiring individuals with disabilities. Very good. Okay. Are employers required to identify and request, are employees, I'm sorry, required to identify and request accommodations at new hire? at new hire? No, they don't have to. Um, once the uh, conditional job offer has been made by the employer, if I have a disability and at that time I feel that an accommodation would be needed on the job, I could certainly ask for it. But I don't have to disclose at that point. I could wait maybe until I'm on the job and see what kind of an accommodation might be necessary for my employment. So uh, there's no requirement at any point in the timeline to divulge that you have a disability. It's completely fluid and up to that individual based on what he or she needs on the work site. Good. Okay. All right. If a potential candidate needs an accommodation for the interviews, for example, an interpreter, who pays for the accommodation? Oh, the hiring authority would pay for the accommodation. So, um, such as if uh, the city of Knoxville, if an individual who's deaf wants to come and uh, take a test or apply or whatnot, absolutely all they have to do is request that when they apply. We have on our applications and on our website, if you need an accommodation, just ask, let us know what that is, and we'll provide it, and we're happy to provide it. And it's our job to pay for it. Um, unfortunately, sometimes companies don't realize that an accommodation is no different than any other cost of doing business. We budget money to keep the lights and the heat and the air on and to make sure that we have a copier that's filled with ink um, and business cards for all of our employees. So it's a cost of doing business to provide accommodations. Very good. Okay. All right. Can an employer ask someone about their disability in a job interview? Absolutely not. A person's disability is personal and it's certainly confidential and it's irrelevant to the job at hand. Bottom line, a disability is irrelevant. If the individual is qualified to do the job, that's where we need to leave our conversation is on the job and getting it done. Very good. Okay, last question. Okay. Um, is an employer required to hire someone who has a disability even if they're not qualified to do the job? Oh, no, no, no. Um, as with any employer, we hire employees that can get the job done for us. And so that employee must be qualified and meet the requirements of the job, if it's a degree, if it's experience, whatever it may be. And that's no different for people with disabilities. They have to be qualified for the job. All right. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You're Thank welcome. you all for watching us today.